continuing. Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Digby, bottom right hand corner. This is from BSL Group A, I believe, and Hasu League with Father, with Father Mars, Son, and Space. And this, you're getting the double rant because I ranted at the end of the last video, but if you missed it and moved on to this one, there's a lot of good StarCraft these days. And I feel like Foreigner's Play has lifted up to the stage. This is the golden era because I feel like Foreigner's Play has lifted to where it's very watchable and where you have remastered with the nice graphics and everything. I love it. I love this era of StarCraft. That's all I can say, which is part of the reason I came back and wanted to commentate and highlight this in particular. Please go check out and support financially BSL. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Son as the orange Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Space as the black Protoss. And this is on Polyboid. And I have... I'll, there's a bug in this match, which... So I'm recasting this from three minutes in. I'll show you guys when it appears. Game one, though, hats off to Son. I like the tenacity. I like the adjustment. There was actually argument. I, I was casting this live in Twitch. Every once in a while, if you keep an eye on me in Twitter, I'll announce when I'm doing these lives. Unfortunately... I don't have as I don't have a regular schedule as of yet as to when I'm going to be able to cast these, so I'm not going to be able to put it on the Team Liquid calendar or anything like that. Maybe I will get to a point where I am able to do this. We see a gateway being built from space. Butterbrain right Gordon, he's got a probe scout starting to move out, but I do want to be able to cast these live on Twitch as I'm able. But otherwise, these will go up on YouTube. Probe scout is going to be able to sneak across the bottom of the map, and it looks like he's going to get that early scout before any sort of marine, and we do see a barracks right off the bat, so we're not seeing a 14 command center. But yeah, I got to say, last match, intense, fun, gas being built here from space, and there was arguments in chat as to whether, okay, maybe if the Arbiter recall didn't happen, I feel like a big turning point was just the sheer amount of kills that one SCV got at the natural. What was that? 17 kills? 17 kills. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I, I feel like there was multiple turning points in that game, and I feel like Sone just really showing, yeah, tenacity, prowess, and wherewithal to sneak back in. And yeah, I think that... Okay, I think this is three SCVs on gas. It's possible that one gets peeled off in the future. This looks like three... We'll see if that continues to be three. Uh, as I was watching the replay earlier, I think one got peeled off and it went to two, and I was just wondering if that was part of the build or not. Probe is going to be able to sneak around. Looks like this probe scout, or sorry, this SEV scout going the wrong direction in the field. We see a factory, and upon seeing that factory, Space is going to go ahead and back off and feel like he knows what he wants to go up against. Now it's actually only a single SCV on gas. This feels like different. We'll see another one gets plopped down. I'm wondering if I'm seeing something different. There's the second one being plopped in. So I'm kind of curious about this build now. So two SCVs on gas. Uh, this is my inexperience of, of as a player, and in particular where it pertains to Terran, to seeing what is going to happen. So this is kind of like half and half, where maybe he might be able to get vultures and siege tech up a little bit faster. We do see a Dragoon being produced as well as that range. And I think this Dragoon is... So the SCV is going to be able to get up into the base, but the SCV is probably not going to have a lot of scouting information for very long. Because single dragoons, when they pop out exactly like that, are going to be able to, yeah, take out SCVs. It's an unfortunate truth. But SCVs have so many hit points, and actually leading the dragoon across the probe line, so still might be able to get additional information. It's got to be so frustrating <laughs> being able to sneak way back across. And this is the moment. Let's see if it happens again. I don't know, guys. I'm not sure if that was a last second cancellation and that's what you just see here. This That's the original thing that caused me to stop and replay and I gotta, that's got to be frustrating from Sone's perspective if he intended that Marine to be built. But we do see a machine shop being built. We have an interior command center as a defensive, so more of a defensive uh, slow posture, just not having the scouting information. We do see space in the opposite corner going for a Nexus himself and it looks like he's scouting to the north, interestingly enough. So he's going to go ahead and just... If he plants these Dragoons here, it suggests that he's looking for either additional scout or a Vulture run by or something along those lines and is maybe thinking about taking a quick third. I don't know. Maybe that's overly ambitious in my stage uh, at this stage because it's possible. I've seen that this, these days where it looks like he is planting for additional gateway, but I have seen players when they feel like their opponent is... He doesn't have any scouting information in the opposite corner, I have to m uh, mention. I don't see any probe or anything here to know what his opponent's doing. But I have seen Protoss these days going for very aggressive economic openings and actually skipping additional anything and going for a quick additional Nexus. But at this stage, not seeing a Vulture, not seeing anything come out, he has to assume that his opponent is in fact going for more of a macro-oriented build. See if there's additional SC... Okay, now three SCVs on there. We do have a Siege Tank. Uh, I think... 
Siege check is finished. Maybe not. Uh, tank, SEV, couple Marines, handful of Marines. A handful is two in this instance. Probe going to get wiped out. But it's going to, and the SEV died, so two kills. So SEV did get wiped out. So both players now establishing the second base. So I feel like the ball is now in Spaces Court, Robotics Facility finishing. Is he just going to go for the scout? He's getting some additional gateways. So going for more of a macro, or sorry, going to go for more of a ground-based army rather than going for a quick third when he wants to establish it there. And continuing to keep this kind of sentry. This uh, I, would, I feel like not saying sentry because of StarCraft II. Sentinel? Something like that. Engineering Bay floating its way across to, to maybe get some scouting information that way. Still no form of detection, by the way, from aside from this turret on the front door. So if this was a shuttle DT drop, that would have been scary. Observatory down for space. And I think he's going to rely on a shield battery, actually. So that shows you just the lack of information that space is playing out of. So he's like, okay, I don't know what I'm up against right here. Still no additional scouts. Second gas being plopped down. And an armory. So I think, again, what we're going to see here from Sone is I think we're going to see more of that build I was talking about, that 2-1, kind of 12-minute-ish build proper. And I think Space is going to have a little bit of a harder time dealing with that this time because he is playing a little much more cautiously, and he's going to wait until he has observer information before he makes his maneuver. And I almost feel like he might have wanted to play a little bit more aggressively to get additional scouting information here because right now Sone is playing very, very economically. He's just now at the 6 minute 45 mark getting his second factory down and is instead just invested everything into upgrades, into getting additional bases. This has been an absolute skeleton crew on this front door from that lack of pressure and Space is just now getting this third. Um, so we'll see how this plays out as it moves forward, but I feel like Sone is in a good position when he hits kind of the level one. Honestly, he could hit a level one weapons uh, timing if he wanted to. We'll see if he goes uh, for something in between. He's got two factories down, which suggests he's going to go for a lot of siege tanks right here. Yeah. Continuing to plop down siege tanks, siege tanks, siege tanks. Just now getting that uh, commsat station where his space is like, okay, I'm just going to try to play this straight, just as a straight economic game. But he's been sitting at even bases. So I, point being, in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to give Sone an advantage. And we will see what happens in a couple minutes from now, about the 10-minute mark, when this is established. But what really, what Space is going to need to do is he's going to need to get a little bit more aggressive. Maybe get some Zealot leg speed. Maybe get those, uh, well, see if we have, have High Templar, Dark Templar, something along those lines. Or just a bulk army to be able to engage that heads up, slow that army down, have the reinforcements, something like that. Now we're seeing those additional factories being plopped down, which is, again, this build. And uh, yeah, level one weapons will... And this is going to be tough to deal with, honestly. I'm, I'm not going to say this is over just yet, because there's still micro that can be involved. But I feel like space it might be in trouble here. He has a lot of dragoons, but he, I don't see a forge down yet. So no forge, no weapons upgrades. He's getting a shuttle. He's got zealot leg speeds. A shuttle plus some zealots can help against that. Looks like that turret on the front door getting wiped out. And I think that turret being built underneath this barracks. More siege tanks being moved out. The marines coming with them. And this is, yeah, they're going to start moving out, I think, right as weapon one's finished. And he's going to be out on that front door with a lot of siege tanks. A lot of siege tanks. And the dragoons, the other problem with this is as you're coming across... Uh, the front door of the base, there is just a lot, an observer not even getting in the base, it's just going to sit back. <clears throat> Shuttle loading up with those zealots. And again, this is more a defensive posture than an aggressive posture. Those zealots are to be zealot bombs on top of siege tanks. Kind of interesting. So the engineering bay actually, I think, was there to spot any sort of incoming drop rather than anything else. He is moving forward to try to deal with it, this exact timing. So maybe he's got this figured out. Maybe he has enough units to really cope with this. If this is a great position to engage this, by the way, because he's going to have the high ground advantage. Um, if he can just snap it, and we'll see in a moment, because there's the weapons one finishing. Now the question is, does Sone want to move out right at this stage? Yeah. So weapon one's finished. He's unseaging. He's going to move out. And if space can jump on this right as it's coming across this area, might be able to, to stop it. So there it is. All those tanks sieging up, though. Vultures pushing back. And unfortunately, I don't know. We'll see how this works out. Could come down to micromanagement. Those zealots hopping on top of those siege tanks, but there are vultures there to deal with it. Looks like those... Yeah, those zealots were taken out before they are really able to deal with a lot of it. And this is some Dragoons in the background. The Misfire, working to their advantage, were able to take out more tanks than I would expect them to. But the high ground has been breached. 
and there are more units flooding forward and keep in mind this is a lot of siege tanks and additional reinforcements that can push out from this however Sone does have an option here he can continue to press this he can continue to flood the siege tanks and the vultures out and be aggressive on the front critical thing though there's still uh, the shuttle up or he can go back and just establish map control and maybe take a third and oh Dragoons can continue to get white, and this is what I was talking about. Now you have that Spreach, and he has to defend both his third and his natural expansion. It looks like Sone is going to try to go up the high ground and wipe out these Dragoons, so he's not getting flanked from two directions. Plus, SEV's coming out to provide some additional repairs, I assume. Oh, that mine! That mine might have been the disruption of this entire attack. Zealot's trying to wipe out mines on the front door, and that might have been it. That mine might have been enough, but... The question is, is the macro from back corner? And I think this, so the, we do have six gateways, but six gateways versus six factories. I I gotta say, advantage still to Sone if he continues to press this. Front door, wow. So third base getting wiped out. Looks like a lot of the vultures getting all sorts of probe kills. Dragoons trying to establish some front door base. And this is, mm, this is scary. Okay, two zealots here. Are the vultures going to be able to wipe them? No mine drag. So nice, nice positioning on that mine. Now trying, yeah, trying to draw that mine into those siege tanks, but... The Zealot's just getting wiped out, and I think that is all the defense that Space has. Probe's moving out. Yeah, there's GG. Unfortunate. So, looks like Sone taking game one, game two. I gotta say, well played from Sone. And I feel like Space did have a moment there, where if he could have just jumped on those siege tanks when they're kind of sieged out of position, might have been able to wipe that force out. But otherwise, well played from Sone. Perfectly executed timing with that le level one weapons upgrade right at the uh, 10, 11 minute mark. Uh... And able to just press through. And I think, it, again, yeah, I feel like space needed to be in a position where he just had more units out on the field or a bigger economic advantage. But because he was playing a little bit more passively towards the front, it didn't work out for him. So anyway, going to move on to the winner's match, by the way. Note from the background, father dropped out after the, I think, this frustration. I think a uh, word of encouragement to father. I don't know if he'll ever hear this. He's going to be a monster, honestly, in a year or two. And he will improve over time, especially if he keeps coming back, because he's got that fire in the belly, and eventually that is going to translate into tenacity and being able to cope with those early game cheeses. But I understand the frustration <laughs> of having to deal with uh, cheese like that, and just, you know, there's a certain point where you just get hammered by annoying stuff over and over again. You just need a break. That's okay. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Going to move into the winner's bracket. And so it goes, you know, standard MSL format or two, double elimination round robin sort of ish thing. I'm not sure what to call this format, but basically winner's bracket, loser's bracket, and then finals. I'm gonna move on to that now. <laughs> 